I don't know if you've been wondering where old Bruce is, but uh, what he's been doing here is uh, retiling a, an old shower that had a fiberglass uh, enclosure in it. Got a little tired of that, so that's taken up my time and uh, just thought I'd give you a little view of what I did here. Put a linear drain in there and a mosaic floor. And for my first, well, I shouldn't say my first shower, I suppose I've done a few, but bigger uh, tile job that turned out pretty good. Hey, well, howdy there, strangers. It's been a while, and uh, as I said, I've been uh, being a tile man for the last few weeks, so. Now I'm back at it and I'm trying to make some decisions on this free Radio King artist model snare drum. And I came out here today and I thought, well, I'm just going to do a resto mod on this. Uh, but the more I look at it, the more I just, uh, I just think I don't really want to look at that. And um, I think I'm just going to do my regular... Uh, honey maple look on this drum just because I think it deserves it and it'll look really nice um, you know for this period of drum this is a solid maple shell probably can't tell with the uh, paint on the edges that came from the factories um, kind of hard to tell but it's a solid maple shell and um, it has one extra hole in it, a regular butt plate, what it came with, and um, a cloud badge. But as you can see, someone had changed the throw off uh, from the 3.20, I guess a Ludwig throw off was on it, script logo uh, Ludwig. And so I'm going to fill that hole, but I don't have a dowel that fits that hole. And I'm surely not going to make the hole bigger to fit my dowel. So what I do in these uh, circumstances is I, I have this sander here. And I'll just turn that thing on and show you what I'm going to do. some dowel rod here which I'm going to just turn down to that exact dimension. I'll show you how I do it. check that out real quick. I want it to fit that hole just nicely and snug. So no, it doesn't fit yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on that a little more and when I've got that right, I'll come right back at you. Okay, now I think I've got that, uh, that dowel rod sanded down just to the right diameter. I'm going to put that in that hole. And I want it to go just to the inside of the hole. I don't want it any further in the drum than it need to be. So I want it to just be flush on the inside here. So that looks pretty good. And I'm going to uh, pull that out of there and put a little dab of glue on there. And we're going to get that thing all doweled in. Then we can uh, let that dry. So what I do there is I just get some ordinary uh, woodworker's glue. It's just aliphatic resin is all it is and uh, I'll just put a little bit in that hole. Just a little bit and I'll push it in there a little bit and try to get it to be around all the corners there. 
Then I'll also put some on the end of the rod here. That way it gets a good surface of glue on there. That looks pretty good. Now we'll just pop her in there. I'm just going to tap it a little bit just to get it flush with the inside of the shell. And that's going to be just nice. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to cut it off. And then we're going to start sanding the shell. I just couldn't... Uh, I don't know, I just guess I couldn't live with this uh, checked up uh, paint job look. Um, I thought it might look cool, but I don't know. Might as well just do it a blonde look and um, get it to where it's all uniform and, um, and nice looking. So that's what I'm going to do. By the way, this is a... Uh, Free Radio King. This is uh, this drum is from the early 30s. I can't remember exactly what year these were. I think it was uh, 33 or 4, maybe. This is six and a half by 14, solid maple shell, eight lug, eight streamlined lugs, uh, cloud badge, snare drum, and it did have a tone control in it interesting tone control um, just the single pad type so there it is the old pre-radio king style uh, tone controls it's in good shape just a little dusty here and so um we're going to let this dry for a little bit and I'll come back at you when it's dry and I'm ready to cut that off. Okay, so before we go any further, I just wanted to give you an idea of what uh, era this drum is from. I guess this is a 1936 copyright Schlingerland uh, catalog. And um, so they did have Radio King snare drums at this point. I was saying pre-radio king. That would be my mistake. And um, and here's what we're talking about. Remember, I restored a an artist model that was more like this. I guess a few months ago, a wooden one. You can look back at my other videos, and you'll see uh, that restoration. But this is the other one that I'm doing now, and. Um, as you can see, they have the, uh, let's see, it's, uh, you can get them in six and a half by 14, five by 14. And of course you could get it with, um, you know, a painted shell or pearl. Now this drum is a six and a half by 14 solid maple. And, um, Notice that hoop on the bottom, that the bulge in the bottom, more like a, a leady hoop. A pretty hard to find hoop if you ever needed one. And then also, um, let's see. Uh, oh, the important thing about this drum is it's, believe it or not, chrome plated. Now the chrome plating is pretty worn on the lugs on this drum. I'll show you one right now. I mean, it's uh, pretty much down to the uh, pot metal, but you know what? I can live with that. That looks pretty cool. And then um, 
Here's one of the hoops. Um, you can see that's chrome plated, chrome over the brass. This is during the early days of chrome plating. So that's kind of cool. And, um, and then it just came with this uh, basic tone control. So just wanted to give you a little history on this drum. And now we'll continue with the restoration. All right, well, I think this thing's pretty dry now. And I've got this uh, the saw here. It's, you can get pretty close to the shell, but I don't want to get too close. So I'm just going to saw this off real quick. Without getting too close to the shell and making dig marks. Okay, so there's that off of there. And now... Um, It's just about equal on there, just about flat. So I'll take my little belt sander here. And I'll just move you over here, so you can see. And I'll just uh, go over this lightly. I'm going to get this thing flat. Here. I got a real fine grid on this uh, belt sander. I really don't want to dig into the shell. What's happened here is that you see the outline of the uh, P85 throw off the Ludwig throw off on there. It kind of they tightened it up real tight, and you can see the outline of it there. I just changed the belt on here. That belt was maybe a little bit worn out. Okay, that's um, 
getting down there pretty good there. Um, so I'm going to uh, hit it with some 220 on a uh, vibrating sander. We'll see how that looks. Yeah, so uh, we've sanded that down a little bit, and as you can see, uh, uh, it's uh, coming along pretty good. I'll zoom in there, you can look at that. And uh, so you can see that is pretty even. Looks like a nice grain of that shell. I'm going to take this paint off with some stripper, regular paint stripper, and uh, I think you guys have seen me do this before, so I don't need to bore you with more of this, but um, I'll show you a little bit of what I do. It's no big deal. Anyone can do it. I put a piece of paper inside the the drum that way if anything falls through the holes it'll go on that paper sometimes I tape them in this instance I'm just going to try to avoid getting it too close to the holes you really need to put this stuff on really pretty thick because um, it tends to just dry, especially where I live. Uh, it gets r real hot and tends to dry up and then you've got uh, just a dry substance on the paint. So I'll let this uh, bubble up. And uh, after a few minutes, I'll bring you back. Okay, you can see it's uh, bubbling up pretty good there. And um, I'm just going to take this putty knife and scrape it. Take it and I put it on a piece of paper here. And as I do this, I uh, take an old cloth and put some lacquer thinner on the uh, cloth. And um, just kind of clean it up as I go. Get all this little paint off of here. Then you see a nice clean panel there. see that it's pretty nice This is old uh, lacquer paint that it, it actually comes off pretty easy. It's not like today's paint where it's real thick. It's really pretty thin paint.
it just uh, bubbles right off there and then you can get it up real easy all right guys this this is where we are with this drum shell i should say i've uh, stripped the paint off and i've uh, wiped it down with lacquer thinner to get the residue off of there and uh, you can still see there's a little bit of white duco paint on there but uh, that'll sand off easily so it really looks like a nice it's a beautiful piece of wood under there so i'm kind of glad i did this all right so um I'll take it down with the 220 next, then my normal process of uh, 320 and 500. Okay, look at there. We got. Uh, so today we've uh, decided on what we were going to do with the drum. We've doweled the hole. We've uh, stripped the white Duco paint off of it and given it a 220 grit sanding and um, it's coming along quite nice getting a little hot out here too so I'm gonna call it for a day and um, we'll take this up with you guys tomorrow well hey guys we're back again it's a new day and uh, I thought we'd uh, do a the next step in sanding for this would be a 320 grit and we'll go around the shell and give it a once over and then we'll move on to 500 so here we go show you a little trick I use for uh, getting the uh, paint out of these uh, seams I just take a uh, straight razor blade it's got the holder here and I just uh, run it along the seam very carefully and I scratch the white paint out of there it's kind of like sanding and if you're careful, you won't leave any marks. So I'm just getting all that fine area out of there. Just so you don't see that white line along there. Run it along there carefully. Then you can take a piece of sandpaper and go through that if you'd like to uh, and make it a nice sharp crisp line there but that's how I get that out of there There's one little spot right here Okay, that's how I do that. Okay, so I've uh, sanded it with uh, 220, and then I went to 320, then I went to 500. Now I've uh, blown it off with the air and got all the loose dust off of it. And I go over it with a tack cloth. You can get these at uh, Home Depot or your local paint store, and I wipe it all down real good like this. Get all any excess dust off the shell and that's good and I'm going to uh, stir this uh, 
stain up real good because all the uh, colors at the bottom so make sure you stir this stuff real good because if you want the full effect of the color see you can see it there it is anyway if you watch my previous videos you'll see me doing all this process I just thought I'd show you where I'm at at this point don't want to do too much repeating but okay so that's pretty good stirred I'm going to uh, just dip a clean rag into uh, into the uh, stain like that and just uh, give it a generous coat all the way around evenly. that boy that's some beautiful wood on this drum dip it back in there go around the shell evenly all the way around and you can uh, let this dry and go over it several times uh, if you want. I don't really want that look right now, but um, if that's the look you want, you want a little bit more color in it, that's great. Don't, uh, don't forget that when you put the clear coat on, it actually gets a little bit darker. So take that into consideration when you're staining. So when the clear coat goes on, this, it makes the stain a little bit darker. So, okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm going to just set her down, let it arrive. They say, uh, I don't know it's how many hours they say. I can let it, it's pretty warm here today. It's in the 90s here in Phoenix. So I'll let that dry for uh, a bit. And I'll come back out and shoot it with some clear. Okay, guys, we're back. And uh, I have, a, I don't know, several different paint guns. This is my old standby, my Model 18 Binks. I've been using this for, geez, I hate to say it, but 40 years. I love that gun. But I also have this, uh, I have several guns. This is a German SATA jet, I guess. I've never really used it, and I thought I'd try it on this gun, on this drum. But I put this tip in here to, uh, that's to put your air on to, and I see I've got a split in it. So I had to put some extra Teflon tape in there. It's leaking just a little bit, so I'm going to try this gun just for the first coat and see if I like it. I don't know if I'll like it. I like my other one quite a bit, but I just thought I'd try it. So, let's do it. I'm just going to take this off. This is that uh, Belen uh what do they call this stuff uh it's just a lacquer and i use a gloss lacquer there's another word for it i can't think of it right now probably because i spray so much paint and i <coughs> my brain cells are all gone <laughs> So um, th this 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 uh, clear has been thinned out previously. I use it periodically, so I'm not going to thin it out anymore. Oh, I've got this. Uh, got this little uh, plastic thing I put on my 
can to pour it so it doesn't get all over the place. Just put that on there. Anyway, I'm just going to pour a little bit in there. See how this thing works. It may not be anything great. It's a German gun, so I don't know. Maybe it will be. And I've got a cover for it here. Um, there's the tortoise. He takes up all the room in the doorway. I'll just set you guys up right here so you can watch me spray. Man, I'll tell you, that was a disaster. I'm going to go back to my old gun. And, uh, when all else fails, go with what works. Look at that. That was perfect. Okay, amigos, we're back at it. Another beautiful day here in Phoenix. And uh, uh, last I left you, we had a uh, first few coats on the shell, and now this this uh, this brings us to what we want to get the um, fleck grain out of it. So what we do is we give it a sand, a wet sand of 500 grit. And that just smooths this down and basically fills in the fleck grains. You've seen me do this process before. I won't bore you too long. I'll just show you a couple seconds of it and uh, then we'll carry on. battery went out on us so anyway I uh, gave it a quick sand in one panel here and uh, all we're trying to do is get it to where you don't see any shine and we don't want to bring it down too far because if we go into the 
stain then we've got big problems it just causes blotches so I'm gonna carry on I'm gonna get this whole shell down sand it down lightly and then we're gonna put a coat of uh, lacquer on it again maybe two or three okay we've uh, we've done our 500 grit sanding wet sanding and I've given it uh, two coats of nitro nitrocellulose lacquer and we're going to let her dry for 24 hours and um, we'll probably give it another wet sand, give it another couple coats and maybe go through that process one more time.